All right. So each and every one of these seniors have been a part of my life for some time now. Josiah is probably the the newest one, uh, but how long have you been coming? A couple years now? A year maybe? A little longer? So, but the rest of them I've known since they were pretty small. Uh, so I'm not crying, you're crying. The, the video Raven kind of did last night. And I'm glad she showed me before we started because uh, I might not be able to hold it up here, all together up here. Thank you, Ms. Raven. Um, but our first senior we're going to recognize. Which one? Is that? That's my brother. Josiah, sorry, brother. Okay. You started talking about Josiah, so. <laughs> sorry, he's just close enough. Okay. 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 All right, so. That I, all right. Oh, 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 oh. All good. Oh. I want you to go back one for me. <laughs> See, I love this picture because I don't know if y'all can tell Willow Lane Park. For years, I've not been able to tell Willow Lane Park. And uh, there's one good way of telling Willow Lane Park. Call them by the wrong name. Because <laughs> I assure you, when you call them by the wrong name, they will correct you. Look, still, I can't. Like goodness, Lane usually wears a Lane Cross name, but not today. Will, see? Will's got the beard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go to the next. All right, so Lane, that should be the first one. Tell me if I'm correct. Yes, Lane is first. Okay. Huh? <laughs> he said, yes, I'm first. <laughs> so with uh, Lane, we'll do this five more times, uh, has been granted a Janet Hall Memorial Scholarship. Is correct? Yes, okay. The Mark Shaw Memorial Scholarship, M &W, the M and W Scholarship, a CACC Scholarship, Jacksonville State Scholarship, and he is planning on pursuing an engineering degree. Now we've talked. Seems like he's got his head screwed on straight. I think he's going to do very well. Uh, got a little place to put this for so, uh, Excuse me. She writes very deeply and I can't read. It's not a tambourine. You can't read cursive. Huh? He can't read cursive. We're going to cripple an entire generation. All right. So, Blaine, I'm going to give you that one. Thanks, sir. Uh, we got Will up there next. Yes. So we have Will up next. I think those are the same exact baby pictures. I can't really tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I like Marcy Chief when she sent those in. All right. So Will has received the Mark Shaw Memorial Scholarship, the Jacksonville State Scholarship, and planning on pursuing a career to own his own large equipment company. I know you'll do very well in that. Uh, I know you've got a lot of persistence and, and willpower, and I believe you will go along with it. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> pun intended, I guess. <laughs> That's the right. Will. Look, I want to tell y'all something. I went to Walmart, and I was getting graduation cards, and I know how much you two love each other, but you are very different people. And you were the only two with different cards. We had to separate those, so y'all didn't get the same one, okay? All right, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Chance. Oh, Lord. Yeah, I like the baby pictures. We was reminiscing. So, me and Lacey has been dating and married and everything for about 16 years, and Chance and his family are family friends. So I've known Chance since he was about two. And don't let the sweet face fool you. He's, <laughs> just play. He is a joy to be around. We've been glad to have him. Um, he doesn't come a lot on Sundays, but he's still one of our youth. He's here a lot of Wednesdays. I think he's been to camp with us a couple of times. And we want to make sure he got uh, included in this because he's been a blessing to have. 
So we, uh, I think somebody gave you the wrong accolade too. There ain't no way you can read it. He did. He said he did. Okay, we're going to read them. All right, so Mr. Chance has played varsity baseball for six years. All County First Team Baseball, East West All Stars, varsity football for two years. This is made up. Varsity bowling for two years. They got bowling? Yeah. What? Yeah. We got bowling. I'm sorry. Varsity bowling for two years. Outstanding bowler award. I can see that. Strikes and Pins Award. Key Club member. FCA member. FFA chapter president. Accepted to Jacksonville State. Awarded to Jacksonville State University. Uh, I don't know what that's supposed to say. Got cut off. Jacksonville State University of Merit Scholarship. Merit Scholarship, sorry. Um, awarded the Porch Creek Indian Scholarship, the Southeastern Livestock Exposition Common Association Scholarship, awarded the Massey Knight Memorial Scholarship, the Bethel All Sports Booster Club Scholarship. It plans on, plans to, plans to go into agribusiness management, Bachelor of Science degree, and after graduating from college, he plans on owning his own livestock company and being a stock contractor for rodeos. That is awesome. That is a mouthful. I hope I don't have to read that again. Uh, I didn't type that in. I just can't read. Just like you gave me a book. So, like I said, Josiah has been with us a uh, little over a year, maybe a little more. Uh, he's been another one of those that he's just dove head first. He's been involved. He's been to camp with us. And, like he's he's always here, and we're better for that. But so, Josiah, I'm gonna let you. Wisdom and knowledge are perhaps the most important earthly things to me, and I attain so both from my continuing study of Ishtai Karate, and especially the Bible. My pursuit of spiritual and personal growth, I constantly acquire some memories of my journey through my life by buying into paper and ink. My additional interests include foreign music, logic, informal debate, and extreme logical deconstruction of any concept. I believe that the why should be understood, and that nothing should be accepted just because of the examination. There's a reason behind anything, and I believe that pain is inevitable and useful, and that pride is devious and rudeness. That truth and logic make the best foundation, and wisdom and knowledge are often best found in other experiences. So, Josiah was part of the classical Christian homeschool community called Classical Conversations from. 5th through 12th grade, studying subjects like Latin, debate, and logic alongside typical school subjects. He is especially, he especially enjoys logic. I don't know what that means. I'm not very logical, so you <laughs> lost me. <laughs> so he has worked alongside his dad, learning the trade of stone masonry for the last two years. What do you want to do? Hey, amen. <laughs> you don't have to have a plan. And last but not least, I have known this one the longest, uh, simply because he's my nephew. I was there when he was born. I thought about going embarrassing this morning, but I'm pretty sure he would run off the stage, so I'll be nice. I will say this. I have watched Nathan grow into a very mature young man. I've seen him grow from the time literally since he was born. And I'm proud to see him achieve this and, and get through school. And same goes for all of y'all. So Nathan was part of B.B. Comer Memorial, B.B. Comer Marching and Jazz Band for four years, playing tenor jazz, honor marching band for Mississippi State, Auburn, JSU, and Troy, treasurer of TSA, Technology Student Association Leadership Team. He received a $3,500 scholarship from NEMAC, NEMAC with a paid internship, which we'll be doing this summer. Is that correct? Yeah. And uh, oh, starting Monday. That's awesome. Wish him luck on that. Um, and he will be attending CAC in the fall to begin his education as an electrical engineer. So we have a lot of smart people up here. Um, I just have to go sit down. 
so I can say that. Um, but guys, oh wait, I forgot, forgot something important. This one's yours. So in that, in each and every one of your bags, we like to give our seniors a Bible every year. And I know you probably already have a Bible, that's okay. Um, I've always enjoyed receiving Bible gifts, and we wanted y'all to have one as well. In that, it is a guide for your lives. Any question that you have is in that book. Uh, sometimes they're hard to dig out. Sometimes it's hard to understand. But you have people around that are more than willing to help you in any kind of way, understanding those things that if you have a lot of questions, don't be afraid to ask. Don't think you're supposed to have it figured out just because you're graduated and you're adults. Okay? I'm still figuring things out. I'm sure if you ask anybody out here, they're still figuring things out. That's okay. Life is tough, but y'all are tougher. We know that. And know that as a church family, we're all here for you at any time. Okay? Also in that, there's a little bit, there's a little money. Uh, not much, but put some gas in your vehicles, go out and eat. Y'all just enjoy it. Um, thank each and every one of y'all for being a part of the youth over these years. We love having y'all and know that we're not kicking y'all out for another month. So y'all can still come to youth on Wednesdays. I promise you. All right. Um, also, one last thing I have. The parents, the moms and dads, we all stand up if you're here. Of the, of the students, sorry. We know that on top of all these students' hard work, that y'all's hard work has went into this as well. Y'all probably thought the day would never come. I'm sure there's been lots of sleepless nights and tears, and many of you still have some to go. So we're praying for y'all for that. But uh, just thank y'all for raising such wonderful young men.
Just gotta let them get that second cup of coffee every time. Hey, that's right. That's right. Man, hey, I do a couple of real quick things. Miss Marcy's going to do children's church. If you're in sixth grade nunner, you want to go with Miss Marcy, she's going right there in that back door. If you want to go in there with her. Hey, there is one thing that I do want y'all to make sure of. So every year, all the local churches in Pebble get together and we give to a scholarship fund. And so if you tithe in any way, form, or fashion, a portion of that went to that. And it was it did not make the list, but I do think it's very cool that Willow Lane Darden also received that on there. So I just wanted you guys to know that. And, and it's amazing to me. I remember when I had known Willow Lane since they were little bitty fellas, and, and when I knew them when they were quiet. <laughs> That was two seconds after they were born. Ever since then, if you wanted a word in edgewise, you better catch them asleep. But I also had the privilege of baptizing Will when we all went to Russell Chapel together. And man, just to watch them two young men grow and to watch all you young men grow is amazing to me. I will say this, we are struggling apparently church because we had six dudes up here and not a single lady. So either the girls got dumb and couldn't graduate or we need to find out where they are because they're not here. Um, one other quick thing too, so camp's coming up for you guys who don't know, back there on the table between the nursery door and the ladies bathroom there is a table and it's got a bunch of cow of uh, ear tags on it and they just have a number on it. So I think we have 63 people from our church going to camp, either staff or, or sponsors or kids or whatever and so we just assigned every one of them a number. And what I want to ask you to do is if you leave here today, if you got one last week that's fine. If you want to get another one, that's fine. If you want to get three or four today or five, however many you feel led to get. But we just want to ask that you get one of those tags off the back table back there and take it home with you and just pray over that. If you get five, pray over all five. Whatever you feel led to get, just get one or however many you want to as you walk out of here. But after camp's over with, what we'd like to do, I want you to hold on to that tag. And after camp, we want to introduce you to who it was that you prayed for and let them tell you what God did in their life there. And so, man, I just know there's power in prayer and there's power in the name of Jesus. So I'm just asking you guys if you will go and in the name of Jesus pray for each and every one of those people that's going to be a part of camp in some way, form, or fashion. So that's back there if y'all do that. And I think that's the only announcement we really kind of missed this morning. I will say this too for somebody. I remember a couple years ago, um, we showed up at church on a Wednesday night and I had a brand new pair of yellow New Balance on. And Miss Amy Watkins came up. Watkins. Amy. Watkins. Yes. Now, Amy Hawkins. Hawkins. There it is. There. Y'all throwing it out there. And I'm like, well, no, that's not it. Yes, Amy Hawkins. Come up to me and she's like, hey, are those yours? And I said, yes, ma'am. She's like, I didn't even know you wore tennis shoes, much less that wear. And I'm like, yes, ma'am. And so I got to thinking about that. And there's been several people in the last couple of weeks, and I'm like, hey, man, we would love for you to come to church with us. And you know what they say? I'm not going. Or you know what they say? I don't have a hat. I don't have boots. And, and in everything that we have tried to do, everything I feel like God has brought us to, and, and we're doing the reason there's gravel on the floor, and we don't pass off the plate. And not any size, all the stuff, all the barriers we've tried to break down, I feel like in some ways we put them up. And I love wearing a cowboy hat and I love a long sleeve curl snap shirt, but if anything, I just want people to come to Jesus. And so I, I, I was like, man, I told the code this week, I said, I just felt convicted this in, in the last seven years. And for y'all that don't know this, and I can't believe I missed it last week, but so I think last Sunday was the fifth, is that right? Six, something like that. June the 7th was the very first Sunday service we ever had in 2015. So the church is officially seven years old as of Monday or Tuesday, and that's amazing to me. But in all the times that we've tried to knock down barriers and, and tear down walls, I feel like in some ways we put them up because people don't feel like they don't fit the mold that it takes to come here. And if they would just come one time, they realize they don't. But I don't want to do anything to ever hinder somebody from wanting to come here and worship. So I don't, I don't know why I felt like sharing that with you. Hey, let, let's pray this morning and I want to share something. Father, I just come to you this morning. God, I, man, I am so thankful there is power in your name. God, I am so thankful for every one of those young men that walked up on this stage. God, I know this. Your word says it's not something I said, but your word says that what you started, you would finish. God, your word also says that before those boys came out of their mother's womb, that you had a purpose and a plan for their life. Father, I pray as a church, I pray as a community, man, God, that we would point them towards that purpose and that plan every single day. God, I pray as a community, we would help grow them into young men that raise families, 
and then point their children towards you. God, it seems like it gets harder every day to do that. Father, I pray we wouldn't be ready to give up. We wouldn't be ready to call it quits. And that's what we do as a church. Father, I pray as we open your word this morning, God, I pray that it would be you that speaks in the mighty word. God, I pray that you would just completely silence anything, any thought, any word that I come up with on my own. But God, I pray this morning that you would speak in that mighty word. Because I know there is power in you. God, I love you so much. I praise you and ask the same for the precious name. Amen. I, got, I want to ask you guys something, and, and, and maybe for some of you guys this isn't you, maybe for some of you it is, maybe for some of you this has been your problem for a long time, maybe some of you are sitting here this morning and, and just this week it became your problem, but have any of you guys ever heard somebody say this, God told me this, God told me to do this, God told me to say that, God told me to do this. Let me ask you this. Have you ever heard anybody say that and ask yourself, I wonder why God doesn't talk to me? I wonder why I have never heard God say, do this or do that. I wonder why, I mean, God's never spoke to me. I want to share something with you this morning, and, and I got a list of, of four with an extra one on there. But of four things that, man, I really, truly feel like, man, that if we could apply these. And here's the thing. Even though I know there's been times in my life, and like I told you before, I've never heard God like, I've never been driving down the road and the clouds part and God just showed up there and is a bad. But I, I just know like there's thoughts that run through my head, right? And like I, I know like it's a God thing and I'm going to share a story with you and I, I know it's hot and I know with the senior deal it's already been long but I got a seven minute video you've got to watch because it, it just proves my point that I want to share with you this morning and, and I hope that you can see that in what I share. What about this? Maybe there's some of you guys sitting here this morning and you're like, man, I just feel like I'm going through life, whether you're 50 or you're 15, and you're like, man, I, I know that God has called me to do something. I know that God has something amazing in my life. I would love to be used by God to do amazing things. What about this? And, and I got to think about this this week. And there, there's a man named Samuel who God chose to be a prophet, right? And, and I know there's a lot of great stories about Samuel, but in, in, there's a part of the story of Samuel's life where he does something absolutely amazing. Because see, when God wanted to appoint a new king and Saul had been screwing everything up, God sent Samuel to appoint David. But see, here's the problem. So when Samuel got there to appoint David and anoint him as a new king, Samuel showed up at Jesse's house and he's like, hey, bring in all your boys. Well, Jesse brings in the oldest one and I'm sure according to the Bible, he looked something like me because he was a big, strong, strapping lad. I mean, just the masculine looking dude. Like he was, man... That, that's not funny. Some of y'all are laughing. But, man, it says that he brought his first one, and, and Jesse was like, Here, here's my oldest, right here. And Samuel says, not me. And so, well, what about this one? He, he's not quite as big, but he's a little smarter. And Samuel says, not me. And so finally, they run through his whole family, and, and Samuel's like, Jesse, is this all the kids you have? Because God spoke to me, and he said for me to come and anoint one of your children as the next king. And Jesse said, well, David's out there. He's a little fellow, though. He's just a small little kid. And he's out there watching some sheep. Go get, Je go, go get David. And so they run and get him. And it says, the Bible says, as soon as Samuel saw David, he knew that was him. Think about this, guys. What if you had the ability to know as soon as you saw what it was that God had for you to do? See, the ability Samuel had is to hear what God was saying. To hear when God was speaking to him, to know that this was the one that God had chosen. Because guess what? For most of us, we would have probably chosen a big, strong, strapping, tall, masculine dude, right? Because that looks like a king. But Samuel had the ability to decipher and discern through all that and to anoint David, all because he was listening to what God had to say. I bet if you think about that and you don't really know that story, you'd be like, well, man, I bet Samuel was just an awesome dude as a kid, and he probably had all this going on. And, and so Samuel knew what it was to hear from God. If you got your Bibles this morning, I would encourage you, your phone, whatever you look at. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, there's a story. And that guy that I just told you about that went and anointed David as king, we find him as a young boy. And, and by most accounts, people would say that Samuel at this age is just 12 or 13. But Samuel has, has found himself serving in the tabernacle, and he's, he's up under a man named Eli. 
And, and so I want to read you, I'm going to read through these verses and then I want to come back and I just want to show you some stuff. I want to show you some stuff that's in these verses. I want to tell you some stuff that I have watched this week and that, that God has just amazed me with how he backs up his word. But First Samuel chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. Now in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare and visions were quite uncommon. One night, Eli was almost blind by now and had gone to bed. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. Suddenly the Lord called out to Samuel. Yes, Samuel replied, what is it? He got up and ran to Eli. Here I am, did you call me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back to bed, so he did. Then the Lord called out again, Samuel. Again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am, did you call me? I didn't call you, my son, Eli said. Go back to bed. Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. So the Lord called a third time, and once more Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am, did you call me? Then Eli, then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy, so he said to Samuel, Go and lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed, and the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, Speak, your servant is listening. And then the Lord said to Samuel, I'm about to do a shocking thing in Israel. After all that, God finally had something he wanted to say to Samuel. There's four things this morning that, that I want to share with you guys, man, and, and I want to show you where it is in the scripture that, that just absolutely amazes me. But the first thing, and, and this happens through modern technology and and I know that sounds crazy, but man, and I heard Jack and Cooper, Jack and uh, Dakota talking back around Christmas because Jack was wanting some for Christmas and Dakota already had some. But you know the little white things that you see these folks walking around in their ears, right? You can get them if you spend five thousand dollars on a new iPhone. They give you a pair. But you can just go buy some. Well, Jack wanted some for Christmas, and there's something cool about these earbuds when you put them in. They have a, an option on them, and so I, I, I tried Jack's a couple of times and. And, and I didn't go get the Apple ones. I got the knockoff ones for me, right? And, and I put them in my ear, and I didn't even know. I knew it said on the package, but I didn't really understand what this meant. But the earbuds that I got, the earbuds that Jack had and Dakota had, had this option on them. It's called noise dampening. And I'm telling y'all, this week, I was running a jackhammer at work, and I can reach up there and tap that thing. And all I can hear is what's coming. I'm talking about I can drown it out. A couple of weeks ago, well, right after the the, um, the steer wrestling school, I drove Joe. I don't know, can't talk. I drove Joel's open cab tractor back to the barn from here, and I had them in. And, and y'all can you know, only imagine when you got something in your ear, right? The wind. Just, I had that baby kicking. We was rolling down through there, and the wind was just blowing, you know. And so all that winds cut through there, and I reached up there and hit that button, and it just what? What in the world does that have to do with hearing? Verse 3, it says Samuel was sleeping. When God spoke to Samuel, it says Samuel was sleeping. See, the thing, the, the reason that a lot of us don't hear from God is because we got so much other stuff going on in our ears. There are so many other things that's going on and we can't hear because I know this beyond a shadow of a doubt. We've got to get quiet to be able to hear God. God is not going to try to compete with all that other stuff you got going on. And I know this, and I, this is one of those things, and, and I swear, like, I wish there were so many things genetically wise I could take out of my boys that I know they got 100% from me. But, like, I could be talking to Jack or Cooper. I could even watch Mallory talk to Jack or Cooper. And if Jack or Cooper is watching a TV show, and they're looking right here, and Mama's right here saying, hey, I need you to do this for me, okay? I need you to do this for me. I, they heard what she was saying. But what they were focused on is what they were into. And I know they got that from me because I, that's why my pants won't stay up anymore. Because so many times when I, when I was their age, I would be focusing on something. And my mom and dad would be telling me something. And then I'd do with that. And I did do that. So I lost some of this. But I'm just saying, like, so many times as grown-ups, we do the same thing. We're like, man, I would love to hear what God had to say. Oh, squirrel. Yeah. I'm not just being real. I know that's funny, but it's so true. Like We're like, man, because see, here's the problem. We want to hear from God, but we also want to be good husbands, good wives, good parents, good good employees, good employers, whatever. And so, man, we got all that noise going on. Even for God to be able to speak to Samuel, Samuel had to be in a place where it was quiet. And see, even though Samuel didn't understand that, he kept running to Eli. 
He kept running into Eli's room trying to hear what it was, but God knew that for me to be able to speak into your life, Samuel, it's got to be somewhere fun. So many times we, we miss what it is that God has for us because we're not someplace it's set up for us to hear from them. We, we want to watch TV. We, we want to listen to the radio. We want to do this or that. I will say this, however. Man, for me, man, and, and I know this is going to contradict everything I just said, but man, if, if I put those noise canceling earbuds in my ear and I turn on some praise and worship music, man, I'm just telling you right now. I'm telling you, man, I, I can just feel the presence of God in me. But so many times we, we try to hear from God and we miss it. Because we're not someplace. The second thing that, that I think a lot of times we, we're like, man, I want to hear from God. And okay, so I, I'm going to try to go to a quiet spot. And so this afternoon, you might even listen to this message. And this afternoon, you might go home and, and get yourself away. Uh, go outside to the barn or the shop. Or, or you might go in your closet. Or, or some of you might even go in the bathroom and lock the door and, and just sit there. Whatever you do. And you're like, man, I'm just going to get quiet. And you sit there for a couple minutes and you ain't heard nothing. And you wonder why you haven't heard from God. Listen to what it says. It says, when you read through there, it said every time that Samuel, man, he, he did not give up. He kept getting up. He kept getting up. And he's like, here I am, speak, here I am. And even though Samuel thought it was Eli that was calling, Samuel was willing. Samuel was willing. Samuel kept trying to hear. He kept trying to hear. And so, so many times I think for us, we want things now. We want like, man, God, I need you to speak. And when you don't speak right now, you're like, man, I'm done. And so we keep on. But it says that Samuel kept going back. He, he, we got to be willing. So many times we, we, we want all the blessings and all the things that God has to offer. But we're not willing to be patient and wait on it. But when I read this story, it says that Samuel got up and he went back. Samuel got up and he went back. The third thing you got to know this morning, if, if you're needing to hear something from God, if you're like, man, I need to know my marriage is on the rocks. I, I'm, I'm thinking about changing jobs. I don't know what to do. Man, I, I don't know what to do in my kids' life. Maybe you teenagers, you're like, man, I don't know if I need to do this or pursue that. And so you don't understand. You don't know what it is that's next. And you're like, man, I want to hear from God. And so a lot of times this is what we do. Man, we go and like, hey, man, do you know what's going on in my life? Will you tell me what it is that God has for me? In some ways, Samuel was trying to do that with Eli, but I need you to hear this because verse 7 says this. Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. So when I read that, I, this is what I know. Man, there is nothing proprietary or special about me or any other pastor or priest. If you read the book of Hebrews, it says that Jesus came so that we don't need a mediator in between us and God anymore. We can go directly to the, th the, the throne room of grace. We can go to the Father. We don't need somebody to come and pray for us or through us. Now, don't get me wrong. I love to pray with people, and I love to pray over people. But at the same time, you don't need me. I hope at some point in time there's not a church in this country that needs a pastor. You know why? Because everybody has realized that, guess what? If you need to hear from God, that is to anybody. It even says right here, maybe you're sitting here this morning and you're like, well, man, I know I'm at church and I don't even know why I came, but there's never been a time in my life where I've been praying and accepted Jesus as my Savior. Guess what? That does not mean you can't hear from God because that's exactly what it says right here. Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Don't discount yourself this morning. I think there's a lot of people that are like, man, God's not going to speak in my life because I'm not this guy. I'm not the preacher, I'm not the pastor, I'm not the praise team leader, I'm not the Sunday school teacher, I'm not this, I'm not that. You gotta hear from God, you just gotta be Eli. The fourth thing I want to tell you guys this morning is this. And this kind of ties in with number one a little bit, because for, for to be able to get quiet, you gotta do this. But maybe this morning, let me just throw this at you for a second. I want you to think about all the things that Jesus did in his life. All the miracles. I want you to think about all the people that Jesus healed. All the times that we read stories about Jesus pre preaching to 5,000, 3,000 people. And they just followed him around. There's multiple stories in the Bible where Jesus was just trying to go to his friend's house. And by the time he got there, it was so cool. Everybody just invited themselves in. They couldn't even heal to get their friend to Jesus because Jesus just showed up. Just going door to door, visiting right. And the people just flooded in there. Everywhere he went, there was thousands of people just gathered.
gathered around and hundreds of people. Even when him and the disciples get in the boat, and they're like, hey, I tell y'all what, we're going to get in this canoe. We're going to paddle to the other side just to get away from the crowd. And if you read that story, they're like, man, paddling. And they look over at the shore, and these folks are running. They're trying to beat them, and they do. They beat them around to the other side. They, Jesus was trying to get away, but he kept doing all these miracles. But guess what? Think about this. When Jesus needed to hear from God, what did he do? He positioned himself in a way to get away. See, so many times we're like, God, speak to me. I'm not ready. I'm not ready to, to, to quit doing what I'm doing. I just need you to speak to me. I, I need you. I, I, look, I, I want to hear from you, but I, I, I got to get here. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. And, and so we, we don't take time to position ourselves. And in verse 9 of Samuel, to, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3, this is what it says. So, so he said to Samuel, go and lie down and hear me. See, Eli, if you read through that book, Eli had his own stuff going on in his life and his kids were completely out of control. As a matter of fact, that's why God's speaking to Samuel anyway. He's telling Eli, like, hey, I'm going to take care of your kids and you because I've been telling y'all to get your stuff in order and you ain't doing it. So now I'm facing to wreak havoc on y'all. And that's the whole reason God was speaking to Samuel this first time in anyway. But Eli, in the midst of all that, he knew that, like, hey, if you truly want to hear God, you've got to be willing to position yourself to do this. So many times we don't we want to hear from God. We, we need a word. God, I need you to speak. I don't know what to do in this situation. I need you to tell me what to do. And we're like, man, I don't, I don't feel like God's ever told me anything. How many times are you not willing to position yourself so you can? How many times? Man, I know, guys, I get it. Like, I, I when I get home from work, man, I want to make sure that Mallory, everything Mallory needs is done. I want to make sure that anything the boys need is I want to be a great husband, and I know I stink at that sometimes, and a great dad, and I stink at that, and, and, and I, but I do, like, that's my heart. But guess what? I can't hear from God and be those things at the same time. I can't. I can't listen. Every message that I have ever prepared, man, if there is some point in time during that preparation time, at least once, there's a time when everybody else goes to bed. The TV goes off, everybody else comes to bed. I've got to position myself to hear. And so many times, there's been times in my life like, where I'm like, man, God, I need, I don't know what to do right here. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And I'm still busy, 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 doing, 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 doing. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And yet I haven't stopped so God can speak to me. If Jesus himself had to get along in the garden, go off in the wilderness, what in the world does Mackinac think that he can, can keep going and keep pushing and not have to get along? If you don't think that's the truth, think about this. Where did Moses go to get the Ten Commandments? In the middle of all the people? No, he went up on the mountain by himself. If you think about this, where was Jonah when God told him to go to Nineveh? He was walking down the road by himself. Think about that. Ananias was alone in his house when he heard God speak to him and say, go across the street and pray over Paul. If we're not in a position, if we're not willing to get alone and say, God, here I am. I need to hear a word from you. I need to hear a word from you. The last one this morning, and I don't think, I, I, I truly believe with all my heart that we've got to be willing to get quiet. I believe we've got to be willing just to be willing to say, God, I, I'm, I'm done trying to figure it out on my own. I need you to speak to me. I truly believe with all my heart that it's not any special person, pastor, preacher, priest, whatever you want to call it, that I believe that every single person can hear from God. I also believe with all my heart that if we truly want to hear from God, that we've got to be at a place where we position ourselves in you. I don't think this is a requirement. But I think it really helps. Hey, Drew, you about ready to show or ready? I'm going to show y'all a video in just a second about the voice of God. But before I do that, i got to tell y'all this story. So this week, like, man, I swear, like everything up from, from last Sunday all the way up to today. I mean, if I watched a YouTube video, TikTok, Facebook, I mean, at some point in time, in, in everything that I looked at in conversation, when it would come down to hear or listen or God speaking through all of us. And I think it was about Tuesday, I got a Facebook message from Miss Angie Gibson. She said, hey, I thought about you. And I just sent it to you. I'm going to be honest with you. It was about two days later. I finally watched it. And I thought, oh my God. And I texted her back and I said, Miss Angie, I thank you so much. 
yesterday, I had talked to the Saints yesterday, we were leaving to take the boys to the radio and they were going to a horse show and we both happened to be at Circle K at the same time and I, I called her in there and I said, Miss Angie, thank you so much for sharing that with me. Here's what I want you to get out of this. The fifth thing that I think so many times we miss when we need to hear from God is we need someone to speak into our lives and recognize it. In verse 8 of 1 Samuel chapter 3, it says this, or I'm sorry, in verse 7, it says, Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never heard a message from the Lord. So the Lord called a third time, and once more Samuel got up and went to Eli, here I am. Listen to this. It says, Then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, Go and lie down, and if someone calls again, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. See, Samuel needed Eli to speak into his life. I want you, I want you to hear this. You've got to be real careful who you allow to speak into your life. But time and time again, if there was any doubt in my mind what I needed to share with you guys this morning, after Miss Angie sent me that video, and you know what Miss Angie told me yesterday? She was like, man, I was watching that video, and she said, Matt, I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but it's not like you're on my mind a whole bunch. But she was like, I was watching that video, and I heard, back home. So what? And you'll see the video in just a second. It's got about airplanes. And she's like, Matt probably can't fly an airplane. It's like, go. And she's like, back home. And so finally, it's like, okay, let's just send me the video. Yeah, I want you guys to watch it. Was in Alaska doing a lawsuit. We're way out in the Aleutian Islands, getting ready to leave and go back to Anchorage and then home. And I had a ticket in my pocket to get on an airplane. And a pastor came up and he said, listen, I can save you money. I said, how's that? He said, I flew a small airplane. And I fly a small airplane, and I can take you in my little airplane, and you can save your ticket. And this did not sound, I said, gee, thank you so very, very much. But I've got this ticket, we'll just make our way on home, me and this other lawyer with me. He said, no, 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 you got to do it, you got to do it. And against every better judgment I had, I said, okay. Well, we went out to the airport, took us by his little plane, and I looked at it, and I thought, well, one good thing, it's shiny. Then he walked around it. We got in. He was on the left front, and I'm on the right front. The other lawyer's sitting right behind me. And he started up, and it started up just fine. Well, we taxied out. And I said, should we pray? He said, yeah, that's a good idea. We normally don't. I said, well, this time we'll do it. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I prayed five, eight minutes. I prayed a long time. We went and got on the runway. He starts down the runway. Plane lifted off ever so gently, and we start climbing. And it's wonderful. Not a problem in the world. We started climbing, and we flew probably three, four minutes. And something happened that will never leave my mind. The pilot turned to me, and he said, We're going in the clouds, and I can't fly in clouds. They make me pass out. I said, Clouds make you do what? Now, it's been cloudy all day. And we go right up into the clouds and he can't see anything. And he looks at me and his eyes roll back in his head. And he starts mumbling and he passes out, passed out cold. And I grabbed him and I shook him and I said, come on, you've got to wake up so I can kill you. Now we're in the clouds, flying along with no pilot. My friend in the back seat said, we're dead, aren't we? I said, there's a very good chance of that, yes. He said, what are we going to do? I said, I don't know. But there was a radio handed him the microphone and I said, start asking for help. So he's in the back seat reaching up and he said, hello, hello. We didn't know any proper radio etiquette. All we were saying was hello. And somebody answered back, hello, hello. Don't you guys know proper radio etiquette? I said, good. I said, no, we don't know nothing. Tell him we're in an airplane with a passed out pilot and we don't know how to fly this plane. The guy said, I'm a freighter flying out of Anchorage on the way to Tokyo. And he said, you're telling me you have nobody who can fly that plane with you? I said, tell him that's correct. Now you can understand, I am sweating bullets. He said, the first thing I'm going to do is start circling so I don't lose you. Because I'll fly out of range of your radio and you won't have me anymore. He said, I'm going to get Anchorage Emergency for you. And Anchorage Emergency will be the people who can maybe help you try to save your life. After about five minutes, Anchorage came up and said, we understand you have a passed out pilot. 
those of you who do not know how to fly that plane, he said, that's right. They said, well, the first thing we've got to do is find you. And I'll never forget what this man at Anchorage said. He said, my job is to get you home safe. He said, that's my job. But he said, here's the deal. If you want me to get you home safe, you've got to promise me you'll obey my voice. He said, you can't see me, but I can see you. And he said, if you're not going to obey my voice, you're going to die. When you can't see anything. You have no idea how disorientated you would be. Finally, he said, okay, I found you. Now, hear me clearly. He said, you're four minutes from a mountain. He said, you're going to crash in that mountain and die. Follow my voice. I never said, I have to follow your voice. Is that reasonable? You see, I understood without his voice, I had nothing. And do you understand? Without God's voice, you have nothing nothing. Finally, he got his turn. And he said, I'm freezing all the traffic in the area. He said, it's going to take me an hour and a half to get you to Anchorage, and there's a lot of weather between you and Anchorage. We're in for a rough ride. And he said, I want you to hear me. I want you to look at what's going on outside. I don't want you to pay attention to the storm, just my voice. And he said, if you start watching the storm, you will but I'll take you through. Now, because they cleared all the traffic, several pilots, those nighttime freighters, those 747 started talking to us. They said, we're praying for you, man. You're going to make it. Listen to the voice. That's the key. They said, trust the voice. You realize your head is full of voices. And everybody in this world wants to talk to you. And everybody wants to be the controlling voice. And God says, I want you to be a living sacrifice. I want you to put yourself on the altar and let my voice be your voice. Finally, we went through the worst of the weather, but there was still more. And then the voice came back and it said, now, I'm going to line you up. He said, I'm going to bring you in right down the runway. And at the foot of the runway are some lights and they're in the form of a cross. He said, don't you forget this. The cross is the way home. Finally, he's bringing us down. We still can't see anything. And all he kept saying was, stay with me. My sheep, the Bible says, hear my voice and they follow me. Finally, just a couple hundred feet off the ground, we saw the cross. I landed the plane. In fact, I landed at seven hours. Finally, it all came to a stop. And the minute we stopped, the pilot, the voice said, I watch them crash and burn all the time because they won't follow my voice. They don't understand I'm the one who can see them even when they can't see me. But they get the voices in their head and they kill themselves. They self destruct Thanks for listening to the voice. Then they put us in a motel room in the back four in the morning knock at my door. I opened the door and the man was standing there. He said, Hello, David. He said, You're the voice. You're the one who got me home. He said, I can. You understand one day you're going to stand before him and say, You were the voice. You're the voice that brought me home. If you're not on that altar as a living sacrifice, and then we wonder why kids crash and burn. We wonder why marriages are shattered. And the Lord saying, I'm the one who has the voice. All I can remember is that voice saying, stay with me. Stay with me. Don't listen to what's going on in your head and don't watch the storm. Stay with me. to take you through a living sacrifice holy for you guys that are still thinking maybe that was just a coincidence Miss Angie sent me that video when all week long I've been hearing it's 
my voice. It's my voice. I, I don't know where you're at this morning. I, I don't know what you're struggling with. I, I don't know what those voices that you're trying to fight, but I can tell you this right now. Everything in that video is absolutely true. So many times we get so caught up in seeing the storm or, or listening to other voices, and we're not willing to hear from what it is that God has for us to do. And there's nothing, like I said, proprietary or special about me. And even myself, there's so many times when I know God's trying to speak to me and I've missed it. Because I, I either haven't got myself to a place where it's quiet, or I'm not willing to keep pursuing, or I'm not at a place where I want to position myself to hear. This morning, maybe you have positioned yourself in this barn this morning. Just want I want to pray for us as we leave. I, I just want you to know this, like, like right now in this moment, it's going to be quiet. Right, right now in this moment, there you're not going to have to compete with anything else except those voices in your head. So tune out what it is that, that you want to do for dinner, whatever it is that, that you need to go do, and just ask. Man, when Samuel went and said, and finally went back to his, his room and he got by himself, this is what he said. He said, then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling. So he said to Samuel, go and lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. And the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, speak, your servant is listening. Guys, there's stuff in your life that's going on today. There's stuff that's been going on for weeks, years, months. You just need to hear God speak. And the quietness and the stillness of this moment, you'll just say, speak, Lord. I'm listening. I promise you today is not just so we can have a church service and have that some cool video. I promise you, you will hear the voice of God speak in your life. I just come to you this morning, God, I don't want today to be being religious. Man, I don't want today to be churchy and any of us think we just, man, we went to church on Sunday morning and we got a check. God, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that today can be life-changing. Man, if we could just apply what your word said today, God, if we could just apply what that video lays out today, man, it would change lives. It would change circumstances and situations all around us. Father, I pray right now, maybe there's somebody sitting here this morning and, and maybe they're like Samuel. Maybe they're just sitting in church and maybe they've gone to church their whole life and they, they're not sure if they're truly saved. And, and, and so maybe they don't know if they really know you. Maybe they know beyond the shadow of a doubt that they don't. God, I pray in the quietness of this one that you still, your still small voice would speak. God, I pray, man. Lord, that all of us, Lord, we would learn to tune all that other crap out. God, that we would, man, get all those other voices, all those other distractions out of our head and get ourselves in a position where we can hear from you. God, I pray we'd be willing. And we all know that every single one of us needs you to speak. We need to hear your voice, because just like that story. And while we might not be in an airplane, while we might not be in a situation where we, we're not really qualified to do, but a lot of us are in things and circumstances where we just can't fix it. So we need to hear from you. Father, I pray you to speak this morning. God, I'm going to shut up for just a moment. And if there's a single person here, Lord, that just needs to hear you, God, I pray you to speak so loudly and so boldly into their life. This Guys, I hope you have an absolutely awesome day. And if you don't mind, if you grab some of your tags on your way out and pray over those.